I know that MSA does a lot of uh, specialty analyses, particularly with uh, commercial pods. Can you talk a bit about what MSA does in this area? Yeah, primarily what we've worked with in that area is with the Nielsen data um, and with mainly on the network side and being that they're hold, held accountable to audiences, delivering audiences and then as the data has been pushed more granular and it will be, will be even more so with the set-top box data, um, not necessarily pushing back on the advertisers but to a certain extent. So. Uh, copy impact analysis, um, which is which is what, which would be measuring um, the the impact that certain copy has or copy brands advertisers have on audiences. So that typical bowl shaped curve can be more or less shallow depending on what that A spot has, or excuse me, that A position has, and what the advertising. I mean, there's a general consensus that let's lead with movies because they're more attractive and so they they keep hold the audience the audience retention is higher in those commercial pods but that isn't necessarily true there's particular copy that is good and bad within brands advertisers categories and we've done a lot of research within their modeling and getting rid of all of the extraneous noises and saying, okay, what, is, what impact does this particular copy brand, advertiser category have on the audience? And while it would seem, well, the, the data isn't granular enough, and it's specifically with Nielsen, because you have so many observations and so much out there that you can, con with models, control for this type of um, impact. So you're saying that certain brands have a halo effect that help pods, or is it more driven by individual creative of the spot? Um, it's a combination of both. Uh, in the results we've, we've looked at, we've found particular brands having good and bad copy. Um, some of it obviously driven by wear out and just airing a particular copy too much. That can impact a brand. But there are specific brands that it seems, no matter what co the copy or creative is, um, that can do well. So there's general rules that you can make up, but we would advise caution around that specifically with my movie example where um, if it's a bad movie or you keep showing the same trailer, it's not necessarily going to be... Um, so it's, it's tr pushed more towards the creative, I guess, as a blanket answer. Have you come up with any general rules that um, networks can use to help improve their flow through the commercial pod? Um, it depends on the metric you're using. Some, some obvious general rules, for instance, with the C3, um, moving those promos out of the A position naturally is going to just mathematically increase your C3 because now you have a commercial gaining the, the early audience. Um, from a copy impact perspective or a brand impact, um, we tend to, while you can come up with some general rules, um, automotive, etc., while it's huge, tends to wear out quicker, but we kind of caution away from that because for every rule you come up with, I hate to keep harping on the movies, but that seems to be a general consensus. While in general it works, what you can do is if you lead a break with a particularly bad trailer or bad creative for a movie, you can impact um, spot B, C, D, and then even your promo camp, a pro promo audience for that, and then therefore impact your entire audience. So our MSA is really known for its interface between networks and advertisers and posting contracts, but I believe you also do segmentation analysis? Yes, we do a, um, a lot of segmentation clustering. We actually um, use some algorithms and models on the consumer packaged goods side, market architecture we like to call it. So it's not just pure segmentation as everyone um, seems to offer a segmentation product, but it's more the drivers and reasons that there are the segments. So we do the initial segmentation, but why are those segments coming together and what can an advertiser do to um, 
monetize, if you will, the segments and what can they do to change behaviors. And we, we prefer to do segmentation on along the lines of, rather than survey and claimed behaviors, um, more on purchasing. And so, as, as Mike had talked about earlier with the Arbitron data, you, you have that, um, or Arbitron Nielsen Apollo data, we had that ability to um, single source, if you will. And so it wasn't, okay, they claim that they buy this and watch this. We actually had the behavior, um, which makes that segmentation a lot more valuable because you begin to get that PBS effect sometimes, um, what they call it both on both sides, even the CPG side. So people say they purchase or read or listen to or watch this because it may s seem to make them sound smarter or more s sophisticated, but then when you actually look at the behaviors, it doesn't necessarily pan out that way, and so you can have some false conclusions on the claimed um, behaviors. So you're able to actually tell the impact between seeing an ad uh, on television and purchasing behavior? Well, there's multiple ways to go about that. With the Apollo data, obviously you could. Um, th there's also fusion techniques, um, and as Mike said earlier, with the integration of set-top box data and frequent shopper card, um, you can establish that relationship. It, it's a lot easier with a single source for obvious reasons, but MSA has, for the last 20, 30 years, um, worked around that even if it's at the zip code level or zip code plus four, you can establish the relationship um, fairly easy through multiple.